Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Little bit of a different setting. We are up here in my office, a space I don't usually show here on the channel, but we're having a cold and chilly snow day today. So I thought we could come up to the office, talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, something that I have put a lot of time into over the years, and that would be my personal library. Behind me right here, there is about 130-ish books pertaining to geology, rocks, minerals, mineralogy, lapidary, all kinds of different uh, aspects of the hobby. And uh, it's been very beneficial for me to have this kind of resource available. That said, I know that not everybody has it in them to go buy 140-ish, 130 whatever books. But that said, there's about four that I highly, highly recommend. And these four books pretty much cover about 90% of the questions that I see asked online. You know, Facebook groups, forums, wherever. You can get these four books and know more than probably just about everybody in these places, you know? And it puts you in a position of helping others as well as not being the person that has to, you know, ask a question, field answers, figure out what's real, what's not real, what's wrong, what's right, and sift through it all. It really will help you build a very big foundation. Pretty much everything comes down to field collecting, you know, the collecting of rocks and minerals out, out in nature, lapidary, and identification. And I have four books for you that will really allow you to hit the ground running with those subjects. If you're gonna be out collecting rocks and minerals out in nature, this book, Field Collecting Gemstones and Minerals by John Sincanis, is an excellent, excellent book to have. It's an older book, so it doesn't get everything right. Some things have changed since its publication in the 60s, but it is still, without a doubt, the most valuable resource we have as far as field collecting gemstones and minerals. A couple of things that are a little dated in it. Example, uh, there's a chapter on dynamite. <laughs> Don't use dynamite. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a very different time back in the 1960s. And since it is an older book, it doesn't cover some modern navigation that we're used to nowadays, such as the use of GPS, which, you know, you don't really need that in a book. Now, there's plenty of information out there about GPS for you, and you can kind of fill in some of the gaps. But this really does cover so many bases and gets so much right as far as kind of a, a preface to what you're going to experience. You know, it covers a bunch of different tips about, you know, mineral rights, public lands, private lands, different tools, uh, some basics of geology. You know, it's not going to go super in-depth, but it'll, it'll get you there. Different practices for collecting, uh, how to prepare specimens, um, lots and lots of great information. You know, uh, the storage of it, you name it. This is an excellent resource um, to have. And down below this video, I will be putting links to all of these as well as the ISBNs. These are widely available at your library. Um, I kind of specifically have sought out books that would be really easy for people to obtain. So definitely uh, check it out if you're an experienced collector. I think this is still quite valuable as well if you're a new collector. I have spent an abundance of time looking for a quality book that really delves into the world of lapidary, the cutting and polishing of rocks, in a very definitive way, something that really sums it all up. And this is the only book that I have ever came across. This is Gem Cutting from John Sicanis. Another one from him. Another old book, but still incredibly valuable. And in many ways, this gets more right today than any of the modern books on, on lapidary. It just does so, it, it perfectly sums up the hobby. And in doing so, it will allow you to have a better understanding of 
you know, sawing, grinding, different sanding techniques, um, different homemade machines. You, there's some plans in here on making your own machines at home. Cabochons, you know, faceting. The, this is what gave me kind of my uh, primer on the world of faceting. I'm not a faceter, but it's very, very beneficial to have. Uh, spheres, tumbling, you name it. It's laid out here and it just has some of the most uh, excellent diagrams and photos for you to be able to, well, learn from. An excellent, excellent book. I would never ever get um, lapidary advice at this point from like a Facebook group now that I have this book. I would say 100% almost, almost 100% of the questions I see asked in Facebook groups like lapidary Facebook groups, the answers are already right here. You don't have to field the peanut gallery when you have a book like this. I get more questions about the identification of rocks and minerals than maybe any other, any other question. And it is a complex aspect of the hobby of figuring out exactly what it is you have. There's a lot to it. It's almost a huge hobby in of itself. So, you know, lapidary, acquiring, and identification are very um, unique little spheres all to their own. But really what you need is you need two books. Um, you need a book to guide you through the world of identification. And you need a good book that has a lot of photos, uh, something you can flip through, nice charts in it, all of that. And I have all of the field guides. I'm not a fan of field guide size books. Uh, a prime example of that could be like the Autobahn books. These little uh, field guides, I never carry these out into the field. What are you doing? This is not a good format for a book for identification. Um, there's just a lot wrong with it that doesn't aid the new identifier very well. That's where Minerals of the World comes in. Terrible name for a book. There's a lot of other books with the same name. Uh, I will put the ISBN down below to this exact one. This being a large format book, gets a lot right. You can see right here we have color coding, which is very nice. Um, that is color coded by hardness. Okay, by hardness up there in the corner. We have very large photos in this, a lot of large photos that we can look at and flip through and learn from. Some large text. It's very well laid out here in a very clear and concise way. In the front of it, we have some basic, basic information about mineral association, how this book is kind of set up, different crystal structures, a lot, there's a lot to this. And this is a great, great resource to get kind of having fun in the world of identification. But this is by no means the definitive resource. This is mere, purely your, your kind of picture, quick reference guidebook, you know? There's, a uh, resources on the internet as well, you know, for identifying. But what it really comes down to is you're going to have to perform a series of tests on your rock or mineral, and then use those resource, those test results to come to a resource such as this, that you will then uh, figure out what it is that you have. If you want to learn how to do all of those tests in one easy to understand format, mineral identification, a Practical Guide for the Amateur Mineralogist by Donald Peck is without a doubt the best resource for this. The problem that we as identifiers have nowadays is there's such a uh, trend towards only going off of very uh, technical means of identification. And that is generally with machines. XRF, uh, XRD, Raman spectroscopy, electron microscopes, microprobes, these types of things that are well out of reach for the amateur, such as myself. However, with this book, 
it doesn't talk about any of that. You know, this is a guide to teach you about hardness, specific gravity, optical properties, chemical testing, all of the stuff that you can kind of do at home to help you figure out what it is that you have is perfectly laid out in this book. This is without a doubt um, the most highly recommended book on the subject of identifying that I have ever came across. I have a lot. I have a lot on them, uh, on, the, on the subject, and this is just, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. If you want to identify your material, this, along with Minerals of the World, are definitely books that you should try to scoop up. These four books right here are absolutely amazing. I'm very happy to have them, and I reference them often. They are by no means uh, the, my favorite books, but they are one of the more useful books. Some of my favorite books are very, very specific, you know. That's one thing that these do not do very well on. If you want very exacting information about faceting, different cuts, this is not the, the lapidary book for you. You already probably know a lot about lapidary. If you're looking for uh, information on identifying that requires the use of Raman spectroscopy, this is not the thing for you. You know, um, my favorite books are very specific. Um, you know, things about uranium, things about zeolites, different types of minerals, deep dives into subject matter. And actually, all of these books back here are documented on my website, currentlyrockhounding.com. You can go check out my book list. I have a lot there to go check out as well. And uh, yeah, you know, I just kind of wanted to share this with you guys today. I hope you find this to be helpful and maybe you can go uh, hunt down some of these books yourself. And with that said, I think we will leave this one here. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Hopefully it will be outside and a little bit nicer.